you took to heart and have shared with a lot of people over the years. That we lose muscle mass um, as we age somewhere in the order of about 1% per year over the age of 30. Now, it's not quite that. It's a bit less than that. But it's easy to remember if you're thinking about that. So I'm 36, I think. Maybe I'm 35. I'm pretty sure I'm 36. Um, so that means I've lost 6% of my muscle mass already. Like statistically speaking, maybe that's not factually true, but it's likely, right, given the statistics. So um, the average person will lose 1% of muscle mass per year over the age of 30, right? That means by the time you're 50, you've lost 20% of the muscle mass that you had when you were 30. By the time you're 60, you've lost 30% of your muscle mass. I mean, that's just a huge amount. And this isn't to say that that is what happens. That to, sorry, that is what will happen to you personally, if you're watching this. It's to say that's what happens to the average person. So there's a mixture of, of genetic and um, age-related change and behavioral change, right? So if you're sedentary up to the age of 30, and then you take up triathlon and start lifting heavy weights, your muscle mass might actually be 110%, you know, in your 50s, what it was in your 30s. So this is an average, but it shows a trend towards people losing muscle mass at a pretty steady and alarming rate once they get over the age of 30. So I guess we'll classify 30 as old, right? All, and that includes me, so now I don't feel weird about saying it. So we're all older athletes when it comes to this stuff, and everybody under 30 is young. Okay. I'm glad I cleared that one up. Um, so the, this is more from uh, Dr. Willie in his podcast with um, with Matt. Um, sorry, I've forgotten Matt. I've forgotten your first name. <laughs> uh, the guy who hosts the Red Chat Live uh, podcast, which is wonderful. Um, VO2 max declines 7% per decade, um, which accounts for a decrease in running performance. Um, so your, your finishing times obviously go down as you age, and, and that's... Uh, that's, a, that's about 8% a decade, which kind of goes in line with uh, VO2 max, which isn't an exact predictor of performance, but is a very close correlate um, of performance. Um, max heart rate declines one beat per year after the age of 20. And so that's where the old uh, 220 minus your age for your max heart rate, right? So that my max heart rate estimate would be, oh man, I put myself on the spot there, 84 <laughs> 184. Um, but that's an estimate, right? But it, it's not actually that bad an estimate. Um, 220 minus your age. And that, like, as you get older, your max heart rate potential goes down, yeah? About one beat a year, right? So that's where that 220 minus your age comes from. Um, you get more muscle mass loss and tendon stiffness loss in the calf than elsewhere. So I got that from Dr. Willie, and I think that's true. And I think you can almost see it in, in older people. You definitely see, like... Um, you know, you see the muscle mass loss. It's sometimes described, especially in the, the, the very much the older years, the, the latter, you know, the last quarter of the, the um, of this century. If, if a century is a rough estimate of how long a human lives, like the last quarter, um, they call it frailty, right? It's, it's that extreme loss of muscle bulk, and then it, and then at some point it crosses a line, and we see it as frailty. Right, it's it's like this. Per that's how they describe it in hospitals, particularly in the UK. They say that it's almost like a medical diagnosis, like frailty, you know. Um, and and they'll say that in the medical notes in the in the hospital, right? That there's a frail individual or frailty um, as a as a condition. Do you know what I mean? Because it has associated problems like fall risk and um, fracture risk, and actually, um, th there's some um, correlation between muscle strength and in your grip and your actual. Um, predicted lifespan, right? And that again is—I mean—it's not like they're dying because they can't grip. It's—it's it's, it's a correlation. Um, so um, we, anyway, I got sidetracked there. We lose it in the calf, and that's where we lose—we get most of our propulsion from our calf. I actually got that from one of Dr. Willie's studies. Um, we get, I think, about fifty percent of our propulsion or absorption when we're running from the calf. And then, I'm not, this isn't exact, but it's the way I remember it. It's like 50% from the calf, 30% from the sort of quads and the uh, hamstring, and then 20% upwards, which is like your glutes and your core and stuff like that. And it's like, well, where do runners often spend their strength training time is like the complete opposite of that. Like they never do calf raises and they do planks every day, you know. So there's, there's a little bit of a, um, I think something I try to do is, is tell every runner I meet 
about this distribution of where running propulsion comes from in terms of the muscular system because it uh, is very much from the periphery. It's the further down your leg that you go, the more force is being generated by those muscles. The further up to your core you go, the less important the strength and the uh, power is. Anyway, let me have a drink. And that fits with something Dr. Whaley talked about, which is 13% reduction in stride length from 20 to 60 years old. And that's, so as you're running, right, as you push off one foot and onto the other, your stride length is like from here to here. And as you get older, it gets, that stride length gets shorter, right? So you're running slower. And, and part of that is that you're not pushing yourself as far with each stride. 13% loss between the ages of 20 and 60. Um, and then on a more hopeful note, an aerobic capacity of a run in their 80s is double that of a non-runner, right? The aerobic capacity or the fitness of a, a runner in their 80s is double that of a non-runner. So it's very important to keep running for all sorts of reasons. And um, we're gonna get into not so much that like why running is good tonight. I think actually that might be a nice um, thing to talk about in another video. like the benefits of running and the benefits of strength training for older adults. But I wanted to answer Steve's questions like specifically. So I'm going to